Hi everybody and welcome to the Electronic Harassment Parent Coalition of Palm Springs, California. My name is Kevin Bond and I want to show you how easy it is to make a perspectives postcard like that. Whoa! That's not Kevin's face being punched out. Whoa! That's not his face. Remember you guys, when I was sexually assaulted, somebody decided that they were going to distort my face and put my fist in it and then send it to me after I reported being raped. And I just wanted to show everybody that's how easy it is to do this. It's not really artistic, it's just the way it is. Now I'm going to try to see if I can get this back to normal here. And there I am. See? That's how easy it is. And, um, you know, that's the truth is I was living in a sober living home and I got a picture postcard of my face being distorted. And there's actually another one where my face is kind of being twisted in two directions with a fist punching it. And that came right after I decided to um, talk to Sergeant Anderson about doing informant work um, against Stephen Fry. Um, I don't think that Steven sent me the card. I think it was actually sent by somebody else. But there is somebody that can probably tell you who did make that card, and his name is Kendrick Davis, because he's on the mailing list for the artist for that show. And if you can see that on the back of the card. Um, once again, this is the Electronic Harassment Parent Coalition of Palm Springs. I'm at work tonight, and I just wanted to tell you guys that today's postings are all about who's stalking Sergeant Anderson's informants. And if you'll read today's posting, which I think I took enough time on, and I hope I explained it well enough, and I think I pretty much did, you can tell that somebody is stalking both Christopher and myself. And what you notice is I went and saw Sergeant Anderson with uh, my parents right after I had a particularly bad night with Lisa and the person that was pretending to be Peter DiMartino using this electronic harassment. And so I went over to see him and I used it kind of like a police interview. I know he was asking me questions about Stephen, but what I was really doing was seeing is how he was going to answer the questions that I had about using one drug dealer to turn in others. And he mentioned a name. Um, he didn't mention the name in conjunction with drug dealing. It was with a story that came from my past. Um, and I thought it was kind of odd because it's a story that I tell, you know, jokingly to some friends about the uh, first time I smoked marijuana or something. And it was the exact same story, only it was using the name of the petitioner who got the workplace restraining, workplace violence restraining order against me. Exact same story, exact same people only she was inserted where I was. And I thought that was very strange, so I never said anything to him. Um, I haven't heard that girl's name in years. I never think about her. I don't particularly like her. She outed me in high school and was extremely vicious about it. And uh, subsequently I heard that um, Jonathan Mendenhall knew her and that she had nothing good to say about me. So I... Um, wanted to re, re put on the record here um, that regardless of what I say about this petitioner, somebody is stalking Christopher and myself because after I saw Sergeant Anderson that day with my parents, I started, I got raped, first of all, at Stephen Fry's home, and then I started getting arrested over and over and over and over again. I, um, had a lot of police stops too, and I don't know if the police can look at it or not, but I'm sure that they record how many times they stopped somebody. But I got stopped a lot of times that weren't even, you know, ended up in arrests. I know that Stephanie Campbell did that stopped me one time. I know that I got stopped and had a gun put in my face one time. I know I got stopped when I was putting up, up flyers for the electronic harassment. So there were a lot of times that I got contacted too. And uh, I just wanted to be clear 
that that's not the only reason I think that I was being that I was being stalked, um, and it all happened right after I saw Sergeant Anderson. Um, one thing that everybody needs to know and remember is that I do this blog um, because I promised Christopher's mother that I would keep an eye out for her for him while um, he was out here in California. That's a promise I made to her on the phone, and she's a very nice lady. And his sister it was also really concerned that something was going on with Christopher. And I, you know, I committed to it. And I subsequently have not been able to get a hold of her on the phone because the phones have been forwarded. So I decided that it was up to me, since he was out here by himself, to, you know, and because I love Christopher, to take it upon myself to um, do the best job I could to protect him. And that's what this blog is. Um, but just prior to Christopher uh, going to jail, I get a letter from somebody named Dave, and it's um, it was really odd because I got one letter back that said, not this address for Mrs. Monty, and then I get a letter from her friend from that address named Dave talking about, you know, that it was irrational for me to um, continue to try to keep her informed about Christopher and to let that relationship go and all this other stuff. But it also referenced things like, I, I send her like, you know, like cards and, you know, Christmas cards. And I sent her Christmas present, which was like some angel wings that were folded. Really nice stuff, you know, just because I wanted her to know that I was still working on this. And she knew from the very beginning that there was a girl that was following me around. I told her that. And it was the first thing that I told her. And so she knew that when she asked me that I was a good person. So... I um, get this letter and it references all these things. Well, it's my understanding now that she never got any of these things. So if she didn't get these things, then how did this person, Dave, that wrote me this letter know anything about them? And if she doesn't even know this guy, Dave, who the hell is he? And why is he writing me? And why are they involved in my relationship with Christopher? So... I get that letter that says, you know, don't don't bother us or don't talk to us anymore, which I've gotten from Jonathan's parents and everything else. Um, and I'm very close with, I don't know about you guys, but I'm very close with my friends and I feel close to their families, whether I know them very well or not. Um, that's just the way they are. Uh, that's the way they could be with my parents. So it is one of those things where um, I got that, and then all of a sudden Christopher gets arrested and goes to jail. Well, that's very convenient for this person, Dave, because now I'm not supposed to talk to him about that. Well, I just figured I haven't heard that from Mrs. Monty, and I know what she asked me to do, and I'm not going to stop. So that happens. But what I'm most interested in is the time frame that you see Christopher and I having problems with the Palm Springs police. You see, my problems all happened right after I saw Sergeant Anderson for the first time in a long time. All the way up until the very last time I get arrested for something that's really ridiculous, missing a class for Prop 36, which is drug diversion, um, for a, a burglary charge um, with no drugs attached. So... When I got arrested that last time, I said, forget it. I'm just going to go in, and I'm going to do exactly what Sergeant Anderson asked me to do the last time, and I'm going to do this informant work. And his request was to bring someone with me. Well, I had already met Christopher the day before. And I can tell you this much. I know Lisa was furious. She didn't want me meeting Christopher Monty no matter what. And he refused to go over to the home that she wanted him to go to, and he stayed with me. So the request to bring a friend with me seems kind of like Lisa might have said something to Sergeant Anderson about bringing Christopher in. So I brought him in. My arrests stop, and Christopher's problems just begin. So you see Christopher going through all his legal problems, and fake IDs and all this other stuff after he does the informant work. But at the same time, he's one of my good friends. So it all seems to center around what we did for the police department. 
So, consequently, you know, you have a lot of things that you're going to see on the blog today that I wrote about that seem to be not such mere coincidences. Um, you know, and even if they are circumstantial, they're still good evidence. And I want to make sure that somebody understands that regardless of whether it's this petitioner or a person who is obviously um, not telling the truth in a lot of situations when you see the pictures from Sedona and you see who she's with and the timing of those pictures because one of the girls is here from Maine and isn't out here very often and you see I mean then you see pictures of me with these girls just the days before we went to Sedona you can tell that there's a pattern and the pattern seems to fit exactly what I know and I wanted to make sure that today I put down clearly that regardless of who is stalking me, someone is. And someone's stalking Christopher, too. So if Mrs. Monty isn't getting these letters and somebody's writing letters for her, who is it? And we want to know who. I think we have a pretty good idea. So I just wanted to um, say that I'm happy that the Clippers won. Right on. And uh, I am, I've always been a big Blake Griffin fan, so that's good. Um, but I also wanted to say that, you know, I live in constant fear that this woman, and we know it's a woman because a woman is the one that called on Christopher Monty's arrest and then posted um, comments that say, this is who I am and this is what I did. And she lies. She just flat out lies. He's not wearing the clothing that he's supposed to be wearing. He isn't, you know, on drugs. Uh, she acts like she was Wonder Woman running down the street. There has to be a phone call, a 911 call. So I just want everybody to understand that, you know, I got postcards um, sent to me right after I reported the rape that made my face look like this with a fist punching it. Actually, it's from this angle, like that or that. It actually looks weird, but the truth is, is it's a threat, and it was called perspectives, and if your perspective is something like this, or something like this, then your perspective isn't going to be something like this, which is really me, and I don't really like somebody sending me postcards with my face being punched out, and I don't like the police knowing that I've been raped, and not looking at that as some kind of a clue, because it is. And the person you need to talk to is Kendrick Davis to see who it was that sent him that. All right, that's it for tonight. I just want everybody to know that we're doing really well. Um, I miss Christopher terribly. I'm still doing this for his mom, and that I don't really look like this, or this, or this, or this, this, is really me. Thank you. Have a good night.